Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of Jane's Speed Shop. This video I'm going to talk about the intake manifold, take it apart and clean everything inside with the seal lid and that sort of stuff and look if there are any damages or we can do some little bit of modifications on it on some parts like the vacuum parts and that sort of stuff because this one will be having some overboost. Um, this manifold is for my M Horse 13 V8 engine going to be in that S124 station wagon. Uh, if you're new to the channel, have a look in the playlist. Rebuilt this engine. Uh, so this is the last part of it. Also the valve covers, I want to be... I think I'm going to get them coated. Also the top half of the intake manifold that will be coated in a nice normal color, I think. Not uh, something bright uh, yellow or red. I don't think I'm going to do that. So if you're new to the channel, right corner is my logo. You can click on it. Also have a look on yayspeedshop.com and uh, don't forget to subscribe and put your thumbs up so let's go so i already did a little bit because i completely decreased it uh, for the most part um, i have some corrosion spots on here on the sides i don't know if that is just a casting thing that's just a bad casting or that is just because of the corrosion because on this side where the gasket needs to go it's all good also on this side have a look this side is much worse i think you can see there are some corrosion spots over here yeah it's not that it's making the uh making it less certain that it will close off when you put the gasket in but it's just yeah it's also a possibility that it's just a bad casting. So I'm not fully sure, but I thought these were also magnesium. Uh, I think this is maybe aluminium and this is maybe magnesium. I'm not sure. So if people are sure about that, uh, let me know or maybe tell me how you can see it. Because I think it's already always weird. I think the intake uh, or the valve covers are, are magnesium. So, uh, I removed the, the actuator, that's a vacuum actuator that will get vacuum out of the bottom of uh, the intake manifold. There is like a chamber that holds a vacuum and then you can control this little uh, actuator and then it will open or close this valve. And as you can see on the inside, there is just flaps in there and if I move them they're opening or closing so they give a longer routing or a shorter routing and it really makes sense when you do that because I sh I have a dyno sheet from a guy that did a turbo on I think a 55 engine but with this manifold on it and um, yeah it really made a difference in the torque uh, figure so uh, it has to work it's they these are a little bit different than I think the M one twelves because they have a double actuator. Why that is I don't know, but I've seen some videos with double actuators on it and that were was on a six cylinder on a V6. So I'm going to put the camera down and we're going to get the top half off because that's the most important for now for me, because I want to bring it to the to the shop that's going to code it for me. And uh, then we're going to take the rest out of it. So there are T, uh, T30 Torx bolts. Have a look how much they are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 on this uh, VA one. Thank <laughs> you. 
that went pretty easy Okay. That's it. Both pieces. Some kind of As it looks like it's a made gasket and not one you can buy. You can buy nothing for this because they don't sell any parts for it. Uh, but this is like just a, a sealer. So you can remove these the small bolts. For them you can get it out and then clean it very good. I'm going to do that. Then there is a sealer on here uh, where it's how it's fitting in there. Also need to do that. Uh, I want to say before I I already put uh, 5 liters of degreaser in it and closed everything, shaked it and moved it and uh, get some parts a little bit clean. You can see I already did something. So uh, that worked pretty good because uh, it's not as cooked on it than in the engine because the intake manifold will never hit 100 degrees. <coughs> it will maybe go up to uh, 50 or 50 maybe in normal respirated engine that's already high so it will not cook the oil really down in there so that's a good thing um, so let's remove these bolts and then have a look where it all goes These bolts are T20, small ones, looks like stainless steel, four of them, I think. careful because I don't want to break it. There's some sealant in here. Okay, snapped out, didn't break it. <coughs> so that's good. Nice. So just mount it in like this. Not really sealed. Yeah, it's not really needed, I think. Okay. And the other one should also snap out pretty easy. Yes. It's a little bit glued in here. Okay. So now we have the big middle piece. You can see how much stuff is in there. This is all because you have an emission system and yeah, 
it's just making it all worse. It only an emission system works only for the first ten thousand kilometers. Then it have got every everything's getting dirty. Gaskets breaking. Yeah, it's very thin, so I don't want to break. I have to break it. Then I have to buy a complete new one. Here, there it is. Okay. That's it. Also some gasket on it. So it's completely glued in there. I think this is not that bad to clean, but we will see. So it's very thin, it weighs nothing. I think this is less than a kilo or something. So you can see we are already cleaned a little bit with a brush. It's pretty easy to do. So this is the first part, so now I'm going to remove all the stuff that I don't need in there for the coating and then uh, I'm going to clean everything so you see the next shot everything is clean and I have a very big job to do. Second half of the Intec Manifold, it's been a few weeks later for you it's just a few seconds but this is I think it's uh, two and a half weeks or something last time I did something on this Intec Manifold because I also need to work so uh, what I'm going to do take the inner piece out so I can clean everything I'm not sure if I'm going to dismantle all the flaps um, I think I will leave them in just have a look because they are all with two small screws in there and yeah it's a lot of time you need to, to assemble everything again and if it's not needed it's not needed because it's it's not that it's stuck or something so um, to remove this nut I think we have to screw out this piece of thread because or I can just flip it out maybe that's also I think we can just flip it out, maybe you don't ha even have to remove it I think we can just flip it out so we're going to remove these screws, they were also on the top small torx screws, look like stainless steel And then uh, in the bottom half there is a um, vacuum chamber I think is in there. I think I'm going to do it all, all the way different. Not going to use this vacuum chamber in here because there is also some piping or uh, some connection in there that can start to leak. So I think I'm going to do that in a different way. But let's have a look. If we can we can get this one out. I'll do the same as last time. Just wiggle it a little bit around.
try to break the shield, not break. There is a little bit of movement in there. It's already out. You can see it over here. I had it moved to the top. It's already out. So this is what I mean about the vacuum chamber. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to use it. It's only for one. I have the old ones in the car that are normally for the front of the engine. I think I'm going to use those because if you got a leak in here, it's very hard to uh, repair. So this one is not that dirty. There is a weird connection here in in underneath. You can see the fluid that's in here. It's all uh, I've had some um, degreaser in here, so that's the fluid. So here is some weird piece there. So this is the vacuum hose. Need to have a look into that. Nice. So I think you can remove this completely, but I don't think I'm going to do it. I have to have a look what I'm going to do with this. So, uh, I'm going to clean this just in a degreaser and the next clip for you is just a few seconds and it's clean. So, till then. Everything is clean. Got all the parts uh, laying here. So this is the last part that I cleaned. Look all very nice, valves are all nice. I did not dismantle it. You can see. It all works very good. Did not dismantle it. There are some little parts that are not fully clean, but like 98% of it is off. So it's just a very nice. It's, I think it's just very nice to see something like this because it's a very nice piece of engineering, I think. Also, this very, very easy to clean. All good. So also, what I also have here is the top side of the intake manifold. You can see it's powder coated in a grey color, how I wanted it, very nice. Um, I removed the, this is the piece where the brake booster line normally is on there. Um, you cannot find any parts for this, so I removed it and I'm going to use the EGR connection to get my vacuum line connected and block this one off. So because I have uh, powder coated this, I needed to remove it otherwise it will melt because part this powder coating is I think uh, they bake it on 190 degrees or something. So nice grey color, nice light color. It's, it looks a little bit like what I have on my V12. So the only thing I have found is small cracks. I think this is already in there, but it's a connection where normally the fuel rail is mounted. So I think I will make a bracket from this point to this point, so it will support it a little bit. Um, so I'm going to look into that. The rest is all good. Looks very nice. So how is this mounted? Uh, have a look, I will put this one over here. So this one is of course for um, this is the underside or the top side. 
and look. This one needs to go over here. So they are all round. One is a square, this one is also a square. So it needs to be like this. This is how it's fitted inside there. I think it looks pretty cool. I think it's a very cool piece of engineering. So this one will flip over in here. Fits pretty good, is it? Looks all nice. This is it, and then this is on the top. This is how it's mounted. Looks pretty cool. So, um, yes, I'm going to use then this. I'm not going to use. I'm going to use this vacuum tube. I'm going to look into this to use as a vacuum port to control the actuator. That's on the back. I'm going to use the other two one because the actuator is on the back. So I'm going to use these two. And I can use the port on the front for uh, boost pressure that's in there. So uh, these two are connected together. I can use a T-piece or which one. Normally, when I dismantled it, there was a connection in the bottom. I removed it. But this is a vacuum chamber. <coughs> so on this side there is this piece in here. There's some kind of casket in between. And there's normally a valve in here. Mine broke. Yeah, it was already broken, so this is also why I'm not going to use it. On the other side, there's this one. In it. So I'm going to glue those those in, otherwise I have a space that you don't use, but I hope you can see it in here. There is like a chamber in here. And I'm going to use just uh, old vacuum chambers that are were in my Honda 24. So it is not in not in here. But normally there is then this hose that's from here. And it's connected to this piece. And that's mounted like this. I think this is stupid to leave it like this because I'm going to close it up completely seal it and then I have a very big chance it's going to leak because other people have this leaking and if you can see how easy it will go off I'm not going to use it I don't want to have any issues with it so um, I'm not going to use it and if you then look to if this one is closed for example Um, you got these two ports. These are getting a vacuum on this position over here. So it's it doesn't make any difference. I still have a vacuum, and I'm then put a check valve in it because otherwise, I, when I have overpressure in here, I will put overpressure in a vacuum chamber and I cannot switch over these flaps in here. So you don't want that. But uh, that's for a later uh, part. So for now, uh, I'm going to end this video as part one. Also, I want to show you, and the, the, this one is also loose, of course. These one I put, put in. Look, these are also clean. So this is part one. And then for part two, I'm going to assemble this. Uh, and then. Uh, show you how I will put it back together So hope you like this video about this dismantling of this Very nice piece. I Think it's very nice to see something like this Nice So thanks for watching See you for the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a look at my website, jamespeedshop.com. So this is part one. 
the next part is the full assembly and sealing of the intake manifold. So, see you for the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.